Hey there, perfectionist, my name's Dilapo, but you already knew that because you're so darn perfect. Welcome to another Poperf review. If you're new, then you should know about the review giveaway we're running. Uh, every week when a new review comes out, uh, you have a chance to win that game. Last week's game was Kind Words. Since it was so inexpensive, we decided to give away two copies. We've emailed the two winners. Uh, if you'd like to see if you won, check out the description below. And while you're there, make sure to check out the new giveaway for Cat Quest 2. Yeah! With all that housekeeping out of the way, let's get into... Uh, this year review for Cat Quest 2 by the Gentle Bros. Before I get started, I must say how excited I was to be reviewing this title. I really enjoyed the first one, I was pumped to see what they would do, you know, with the new title going forward. Graphically though, it's pretty much the same. I can't really tell that there are any major differences between the old one and the new one when it comes to art direction. I assume a lot of this is the same, but you know what they say about assuming. Either way, there are a new host of new assets and characters. The locations are a bit more varied and the menus look quite a bit better. So all in all, the game looks pretty similar, but there is some elevation. Like, that's about it. Now, if I were to talk about this game on its own merit, I would say that I really do like the art direction. It definitely makes the franchise stand out. The idea that the characters are actually on the map, you know? Like, locations are labeled like the Pacific Divide and Capital City, but we'll get to the puns later. But yes, the game looks very good. Almost like a very beautiful storybook. The animations don't look bad either, every spell looks unique and vibrant. I never really found myself getting tired of looking at this game, which is which is cool. Sometimes I talk about the menus in this section because, well, it's my review. Get your own. The menus in this game are fine, at least until you get, you know, into the game. I'm reviewing this title on Steam, but it should be noted that this is coming to consoles as well. Why does this matter? Because I played this game with both a controller and PC controls. The menus are pretty good when using a mouse, but my goodness do they suck when using a controller. My biggest issue is how awkward it is to take an item from, say, the cat and put it on the dog. The game doesn't automatically remove an item from the cat, so I have to switch to the cat first, unequip the item, switch back to the dog, and then equip that item. It's pretty tedious, especially when you keep doing it constantly as you get new loot. I really hope this is something they take care of at some point. Um, it's a minor gripe, but it's still, it still bothers me. The game just feels more comfortable overall with a controller. It's almost like it was made for a controller, you know, but the menus weren't. Story-wise, this game is quite a bit stronger. I honestly can't even tell you much about the previous game's story. It didn't really seem strong enough at any point. Motivation is a huge part of why we complete stories in games. Well, I am happy to tell you guys that I was very much impressed by this game's narrative. I mean, it's a game about dogs, cats, and magic. I'll try my best not to show it anything that would spoil the game, um, but at least that means there's something worth not spoiling, right? Very right. As a brief synopsis, you take control of two characters, a dog and a cat. You guys show up on the scene and are greeted by generic fairy number 437. You make your way onto a continent composed entirely of cats. Some of them are chill and others are... Uh, kind of racist towards the dog character. You push forward and make your way to another land, this one is only dog inhabited, and you find similar feelings toward your cat. It turns out there was a MacGuffin at one point that helped the creatures in this world get along, but without it, well, yeah, no mas. Either way, it's your job to restore order. I know it sounds pretty generic, but it really isn't. I'm really just trying not to give anything away that's, you know, dire. Either way, it's a sweet story. I can't tell you how many times I was like, duh. And uh, this is coming from someone who is an avid dog person. Like, I really don't do cats. But damn if they didn't make me care about them at least in cartoon form. I hope Lucian and Quinn are okay with that. Hey, so guys, I'm I'm doing a review of Cat Quest 2, and I was wondering if you guys were okay with that. Well, you don't have a choice. This game is very entertaining up to a point, and I hate having to say that because the story itself is pretty engaging, but the humor this time around tends to fall very flat. There are only so many times uh, where someone can hear the words like, her paw or meow as jokes before you never want to see a cat again. Very early on you get the sense that this is uh, less jokes being told over and over again and more just 
part of the character's language. Uh, words like perfect don't exist, instead it's perfect. The problem is that if you played the previous game, you've heard all of this before. The only humor saving grace is the fact that there are dogs in this one. Blessed, blessed dogs. Because of this, there are dog-based puns uh, that don't wear out their welcome quite as quickly. Uh, once again, because they weren't in the first one. There was a part of the game where someone said, rough em up, and I audibly laughed. Like, really. Once again, dogs have saved the day. All of that said, um, I can definitely tell that this was written with a lot of care this time around. Like the idea that even side quests are used for world building, which is good. They're not just, you know, usually the bland old fetch quests. So that checks the story box. Let's move on. Cat Quest 2 is an open world RPG on a cat size scale. The game offers a main story as well as side quests, dungeons, trials, you know, the works. There are a ton of weapons, armor, and spells to unlock, each of which are upgradable for, thankfully, one type of currency. Let's begin with the core gameplay. The game functions like a lot of isometric indie titles. You've got your basic attacks, spells, and of course, your dodge roll. This type of game wouldn't be complete without one. What I will say is whoever your favorite character is, be it the dog or the cat, Make that one the mage. Each enemy type has its like weakness within the game and a strength. This is denoted in the color of the numbers that represent the damage that you're doing, you know, a la RPGs. What I found is that magic is fairly unbalanced in this title. Not the spells themselves, you know, like the fire, lightning, whatever, um, but magic wielding itself. Like, you know, it kind of seems like you can kite almost anything to death while wielding a wand, the exception being bosses who are resistant to magic. How about challenge, though? You know, difficulty? Well, I don't say this about a lot of RPGs, but this one is probably one of the best balanced games I've played when it comes to difficulty. I never felt the need to grind. This is partially because the game offers so many trial dungeons and side quests that I never really felt under leveled anywhere on the map. This may also be because I got pretty good at reading attack cues from enemies. The main quests themselves will put you pretty close to where you need to be to beat the game, but I can tell you that it'll take some work. This game is quite a bit more difficult than I remember the first one being, and I know that that was a chief complaint of mine um, the first time around was that it was just a bit too easy. But whenever I died in this game, I felt as though it was my fault, and that's important. Next, we'll chat about the loot. Like any other good RPG, the loot in this game is as unique as it is abundant. Loot can be gathered from many places, quests, dungeons, and trials. There are many types of weapons which are either basically melee weapons or magical instruments. The swords and hammers are pretty self-explanatory. Um, the magic items allow characters to use magic spells at a distance, trading low basic damage for stronger spell damage. Much like the last title, the weapons you find can be found multiple times. Each time you find a weapon you already have, have, the game makes it stronger for you, thus giving value to items you once deemed weaker. I really like this mechanic. You can also use coins to make weapons and armor stronger. The same can be done with spells, though I didn't find much use in upgrading the spells. If you feel the need, I would say to put any and all money into the heal spell. Everything else is pretty strong on its own. Oh, and there's couch co-op play. Uh, one character takes control of the cat while the other uses the dog. The game feels slightly more fluid this way, though you shouldn't fear anything um, if you're in single player. The AI is competent enough uh, so long as you have the appropriate armor and weapons on them. Overall, the gameplay in this title is pretty solid. Not too much deviates from the previous game. I would really have liked to have seen some sort of combo system, at least for the melee weapons. I was hoping that the combat would be a bit deeper than the last title, uh, something to at least give the endgame a little bit more of a shakeup. They could have given the spells different appearances as they leveled up, kind of like the difference between Fyra and Fyraga from Final Fantasy. Because the combat lacks something like these, it feels a tad shallow in that department, but it definitely makes up for it in other facets. What a treat this game was. I love watching indie titles and franchises evolve. Cat Quest II is a fantastic time. Even better, you don't have to have played the first one to enjoy it, though there are little nods here and there for those of us who played the previous one. That said, if you had to pick one, I think this one will scratch a few more itches than the first. It has a much more compelling storyline, more loot to work for, two adorable protagonists, and all the dog jokes you can handle. Probably a few too many. 
Either way, the game is fun, quirky, and definitely worth a look. I'm giving Cat Quest 2 a B. While it is a very good time, there is just not enough gameplay-wise here to differentiate it from the previous title. At times, it just feels like a more polished version of the first Cat Quest than its own game. Thanks for watching. Stay perfect.